Hey folks, welcome back to the channel. This is Marta's Magical Mystery Class. It's NaNoWriMo Day 20. You are two-thirds of the way. It's fantastic. You've just got 10 more days. Uh, this is also Sound Saturday, so I get to give you a couple minutes of distraction thinking about audiobook production. Last time I gave you the nickel tour of Audacity, which is the primary software uh, I recommend if you're doing your own audiobook production and editing. Um, let's, I'm kind of backing up into what do you need for audiobook recording? Uh, I would say you really need three things. You need a place to record. You need a good microphone and stand and you need a music stand or some other shelf to put your script on. Obviously, those things are all different levels of complexity. Um, finding a place to record is a little trickier than it sounds. I do all these videos down in my office. When I watch them upstairs on my TV, I can hear the sound echoing. So for YouTube, I'm not too worried about having imperfect sound. But passing Amazon's quality assurance, passing the ACX Marketplace quality assurance for audiobooks, you're going to need really good sound quality. And that means an echoey room is not going to do it. Um, I have a walk-in closet and I use my, um, it's full of clothes, clothes absorb sound. So if you have access to a walk-in closet, I highly recommend it. If you don't have access to a walk-in closet, your next best bet is to kind of jam yourself into a coat closet and then you can do what I did. I, my walk-in closet has clothes on two sides and then the third wall is fairly open. So I spent $8 and got myself an eggshell foam mattress pad. And I'm using, I just stick that up with tape, like duct tape to cover the third wall of the closet and have it absorb sound. So if you don't have access to a walk-in closet, but you have access to something like a coat closet, um, you might give that a shot with some of the eggshell foam kind of pulled around you as you're recording. You want that foam around you both to absorb sound uh, and dampen any echoing. <coughs> so that's my two cents on finding a good recording space. Um, if you've got a, I, I hesitate to say, oh, a small bathroom would work too because Bathrooms are usually tile. Um, that's gonna make the sound bounce all around. So you can experiment too. You can also record things and see what you think. Um, see where there's less echoing, see where the sound uh, seems quieter and clearer. So that's your space. Uh, second thing is your microphone. I can't recommend Apogee highly enough. Um, I really, I recorded my audiobook using an Apogee Mic Plus. Those goes, those go <coughs> for around 250 bucks online. I have since purchased a hype mic that I'm planning to use for my next project. That's a $350 price tag. I was fortunate that I was able to borrow the Mic Plus when I was recording uh, the audiobook. Um, but I, I now have the hype mic. I do need to get a stand for it. So the stand, I know I'm looking at 25 to $50. Um, the last thing you need, and, and if the Apogee mics, I should say also, if the Apogee mics are out of your price range, you have two options. There are other microphones on the market. You'll wanna look at how they compare to Apogee. You'll want, to see, you know, if you've got $100 to spend, how can you leverage that $100 to get a microphone that's gonna be closest in quality to an Apogee mic? The other possibility, 
lots of libraries are lending out sound equipment now as part of the whole library of things, internet of things kinds of projects. Um, so you might check with your local library and see if they have a microphone that you could use that would be available to borrow for recording purposes. It's another option for you. Uh, the final thing would be to get yourself a stand or a shelf. I use just a good solid metal music stand. Not one of the little folding ones for marching band, but a big heavy metal one. If you go, you can look online for it. You can go to your local music store. Um, I went to my local music store, told them what I needed. Um, we talked about several different options and I ended up with a really good sturdy stand for about 30 bucks. So uh, those are kind of the three pieces of recording equipment um, when you get your microphone, whether it's an Apogee or not, make sure there's some kind of software that works with the microphone, either software that installs on a laptop or software that installs on your phone. I did everything through my, through my phone, um, but if you have a relatively quiet laptop, you should be able to record using your laptop or even a desktop computer if you can manage all of that uh, kind of moving it into your recording space. Um, but the software, there should be some kind of software. It'll be minimal. It won't be a real fancy program, but it should be some kind of minimal software program that cooperates with the microphone, translates what's coming from the microphone into a sound file that can be recorded either onto your phone or onto your laptop. That's what I've got for Sound Saturday. See you next time. Bye-bye.